Hello, hello, welcome, <laughs> male, female, and everything in between, to Drew's Nose Network. Today, in the spirit of Christmas, we will be covering all the facts about the new deal between Elon Musk and Santa Claus. <laughs> Elon Musk. It's Grandma Reed's. Say what? What was it? It's Grandma Reed's. Oh, my mistake. This isn't Drew's News Network at all, is Do it? Do you even read the emails we send you? Email? What? You know what? Cut. We're... we're... Andrew! Let's do this one more time. Okay. Andrew! You're gonna shoot me? I'm offended. It wasn't that. Hello, hello, and welcome to Grandma Reads. As you can tell, this is a very special segment of Grandma Reads because, well, for one, we're doing it during daylight hours for once. And as you can see, I am not Grandma. So uh, today we have a bit of a throwback theme. We have suggested books from the parents and other people. I'm not entirely sure what all of those are, but I think it'll be pretty fun to see what books everyone gets this year. So Merry Christmas, everyone, and I hope you enjoy Grandma Reed. Quiet on the set. Right, scene one, take one. Welcome to Grandma's Read Live. This is the first time we've done this live, and we have some special guests because we have aunts and uncles that have recommended the books this year from books that they read when they were your age. So we have some great classic books that are awesome. And our special guests are going to help introduce the books to you. Our first special guest is Steph Bannister. Let's all welcome her up. <laughs> Since this is for the triplets, do you want to unwrap their books so we can show them, or would you rather keep them wrapped up and let them unwrap them? All right, pass up the triplets. We'll pretend like the triplets are here. We're going to show them this later mm -hmm. and maybe videotape them looking at their books and put that in the movie. Because right. Grandpa's going to do this post-production later. Okay. So, right, and I'm... Steph, you can open the books for the triplets because you recommended these. I've never gotten to open a, a grammar piece. It's very exciting. Okay. All right. Okay, what is this? this is the set of books by Roald Dahl, who is a, I couldn't pick just one book, but it is, he's one of my favorite authors because I feel like in, a, in an age where we don't play and use our imagination as much, um, Roald Dahl is the perfect set for, um, for kiddos to think uh, outside the box, and Roald Dahl always did. And some of my favorite memories came from these books because we used to do them as read-alouds in school and I remember those teachers and, and the spark of imagination that we had. So um, yeah, I couldn't pick just one. So Very I, cool. Um, now I, we do have to note though, you can't eat these books. <laughs> yes. You might have to put them away as a read-aloud. Yes. So all the older people in the household, mm -hmm. these are books you can read to the triplets. They can't carry them around by themselves because they'll probably easily tear the pages and they wouldn't be able to read them by themselves anyway. So these are times when you wanna pull one or two or all three of them aside and read to them for a while. So play, mm -hmm. hold on, that'd be a good idea too. Yeah. Um, then they hopefully will enjoy these books. Mm -hmm. Char Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, has anybody read that one? No. Yeah, it's a cool mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. So hopefully you triplets are gonna have fun with these books. Samari, Serenity, and Saraya. These are your books, and Aunt Steph recommended them. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. All right. Grandma reads scene two, take one. All right, we are here with Nash Lunsford and Will Bannister, and their book today is called, well, I wonder what it is. Why don't you unwrap them and let's see. This book actually was recommended by Aunt Shell who could not be here today, but she is going to record you some information about the book later. Merry Christmas, Nash and Will. I heard that you guys got Thunder Cake from Grandma and Grandpa B this year, and that book was one of my favorites growing up, and I still love it. It always made me think of doing baking and fun ways of measuring and timing things whenever I was growing up with my gram, and I know that you guys love to bake and cook with Grandma and Grandpa B. So, Enjoy it and think about all those fun memories you've made with cooking and baking so far and what you can do next whenever we all get back together. I cannot wait to read this story with you the next time I see you both. And I both hope you have a merry, merry Christmas. I love you two so much. Bye. Let's open them up and see what it's called. Can you rip up the paper? Yeah. 
It looks like Grandma got run over by a reindeer. Yeah. The reindeer's on there, yeah. I think so. Wow, what is it? What is it? What is it? What? what? Thunder cake. Can you say thunder cake? No. Mine is the same one. It is. Can you guys show your books to Grandpa? Here, well, can you hold it for me, please? You like the paper? Thunder cake. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about it since Aunt Rochelle is not here. It talks about someone named Babushka. You know what Babushka is? No, no. It means grandma. So on the sultry summer days at my grandma's farm in Michigan, the air gets damp and heavy. Storm clouds drift low over the fields and birds fly close to the ground. And the clouds glow for an instant with a sharp crackling light and then a roaring, low, tumbling, rumbling sound makes thunder and the windows shudder in their panes. The sound used to scare me when I was little. It scared that Trish too. She does not like the thunder storm. I love to go to grandma's house, babushka, as I used to call my grandma, had come from Russia years before, but I feared the Michigan summer storms. I feared the sound of thunder more than anything. I always hid under the bed when the storm moved near the farmhouse. This is the story of how my grandma, my babushka, helped me overcome my fear of thunderstorms. Does that sound like a good book? I yeah. think it'll be fun. All right, and notice in all of the books, grandpa and I always say which year it is for Christmas. And this time we say who recommended the book. So we'll say recommended by Aunt Rochelle. So maybe when next time you see Aunt Rochelle, you can talk to her about thunder cake. All right? Wave the camera. Say bye-bye. Bye, bye. bye. I hate bye bye. Alright. Grandma reads scene three, take 14 and a half. <laughs> and we're back now with Aunt Treva, who has recommended a book for Lizzie and Amos. So Lizzie and Amos, rip open your books. Let's see what it is. Come on, people, we're not saving the paper. Okay. <laughs> They're very careful. They're very careful unwrappers. What is it? What is it? You know what it says, Lizzie? Wayside School is falling down. Oh, Amos is still doing his careful. The Wayside School is Falling Down. And Trevor recommended this book for you guys. Can you tell us a little bit about the book, Trevor? Oh, yes. So, Wayside School is Falling Down. There's a few different books in this series. So, if you like it, you can go and find some more books in this series. Um, it's all about some silly events that happen in school. Um, this one, I believe, is about some gross things that happen in the cafeteria. Ooh, <laughs> um, so fun. you can find out what happens in school, some of the silly antics that the different <laughs> school children get into, and um, if there's something gross that happens in the cafeteria. Oh boy! Can you find the page where it says the book was recommended by Aunt Trevor? Right near the front. It. There you go. So if you ever forget, you can see that this book was recommended by Aunt Treva. Thanks so much. Come share with me. Sit over a little bit. All right, quiet on the set. Scene four, take six. And we're back with Grandma Reads, and this is JJ's book. So, JJ, can you rip that open? And while you're unwrapping it, I will say Uncle Ben rep, uh, recommended this book, as well as Aunt Trina and Trevor, because they all remember having this book when they were little. Um, Trisha probably recommended it, too. I don't know. She probably remembers it. But there's one really good uh, part that I want to read to everyone. <laughs> so it's a good family book. So, JJ, you may want to share this with uh, all your siblings at home because there's a lot of fun stuff to read in here. Yes. You know what this that's called, JJ? It's the best book ever. <laughs> Where the yes. Sidewalk Ends. Where the Sidewalk Ends by Shel Silverstein. So, Trina, you want to tell us a little bit about what you remember about this book? 
This book is full of funny poems. Um, they're short poems, most of them, but I remember a lot of these poems and we used to recite these to each other and laugh and it's just a good book. Yeah, yes. all the good pictures. Too. I think I marked funny. one that I wanna read to you because it's one that Uncle Ben read all the time to his sisters. Can anybody guess what it's called? I can. What is it called, Trevor? Sister for Sale. It is. <laughs> Sister for Sale. So listen to this. This is awesome. One sister for sale. One sister for sale. It's one crying one. and spying young sister for sale. I'm really not kidding, so who will start the bidding? Do I hear a dollar, a nickel, a penny? Oh, isn't there, isn't there, isn't there any one kid who will buy this old sister for sale, this crying and spying young sister for sale? And then he draws the picture so you can see his sister's <laughs> over there. He's like, I, I need somebody to take her. I'll take her. Um, <laughs> do you remember, Trina, when we had a lemonade stand and Ben earned almost as much money for reciting that poem from memory <laughs> as we made... <laughs> Selling, selling actual lemonade. lemonade. Yeah. <laughs> He's trying to sell his sisters. So, JJ, I hope you enjoy Where the Sidewalk Ends by Shel Silverstein. So, we have a book here for Shyasia, who could not be here in the big cabin right now for Christmas. So, we're not going to unwrap it, but I'm going to tell her what it is here on the video. And it was recommended by Trina. It is Alice in Wonderland and Alice Through the Looking Glass. Two books in one! Down the rabbit hole way little Alice goes to follow her own peril, but beware of the world you're about to enter. One with decapitization crazed queen, an unintelligible duchess, a sleepy dormouse, a chronically late rabbit, a witty Cheshire cat, a blue hookah smoking caterpillar. I had her in March hair hosting a mad tea party, caucus race involving numerous other talking animals. There's a lot of crazy stuff in these books that have been there Yes. Why did you like these books? It was whimsical. I probably read Alice in Wonderland like 10 times when I was between 10 and 14 years old. Yeah. I read it so many times. It was one of my favorite books. So I hope, Shia, that you actually read this book and enjoy it like I did. Yay. Good. That was really bad, but I don't care. What was that? Your face. Your face. Oh. <laughs> Your butt. Oh. All right. Loading quiet. Grandma reads scene six, take three. All right, we're here with Owen. So Owen, open that book up and let's see what it is. It is one also that has been recommended by Aunt Treva. I'm excited. I don't even know what these are. I know. It's a surprise <laughs> for the adults, too. Because Ethan and Andrew did such a good job keeping a secret. Oh, this one's good. So this one also has a movie that goes with it. So Howl's Moving Castle. So this one, I'm gonna hold it up to show the camera. Show the camera. So this one is fantasy and intrigue and, oh, it's really good. And then you can watch the movie when you're all done. But the book is better than the movie. So definitely read the book first. So I'm gonna read just a brief excerpt about the book. Sophie had the great misfortune of being the eldest of three daughters, destined to fail miserably should she ever leave home to seek her fate. But when she unwittingly attracts the ire of the Witch of the Waste, Sophie finds herself under a horrid spell that transforms her into an old lady. Her only chance at breaking it lies in the ever-moving castle in the hills. The wizard Howl's castle. To untangle the enchantment, Sophie must handle the heartless Howl, strike a bargain with the fire demon, and meet the Witch of the Waste head on. Along the way, she discovers that there's far more to Howl than herself than meets the eye. Dun, dun, dun. Does it sound good? Okay. All when right. you finish that, then go and watch the movie and tell me which one you like the best. Okay. Okay? All right, deal. Good job. Grandma reads scene seven, take negative two. <laughs> All right, we got the older Lunsfords here. Unwrap your books and see if you can tell me who recommended the books. See if you were listening earlier when I told you how you'd know who recommended the books. Does anybody remember how you know who recommended the books? All right. Uh, you need help, Uncle Lucy Zach. can tell you. Uncle Zach. Uncle Zach! Come on down, Uncle Zach! <laughs> also, I recommend you. Also, I There's three different books here for you and to I, talk about. Uh-oh. I opened up for you. 
Do I remember recommending so, it? So, Everett has the Weston game. Can you show the camera, Everett? Gavin has Call of the Wild. <gasps> I love that book. And Finnegan has Journey to the Center of the Earth. Ooh, nice. Ooh, I love that so, Uncle Zach's going to tell you a little bit about why. Yes, so the, the Westing game is a fun one because it's like a mystery book for kids. Yeah. Uh, a lot of us probably enjoyed that one when we were younger. I haven't read that one, but I've read that and one. And The Call of the Wild is fun because it's about nature and a wolf, and it's a really cool book. Um, very good boy books is, I think, what I was recommending. Um, and then anything by Jules Verne is always fun. Lots of adventure. Journey to the Center of the Earth was one of the first ones that I really got into and enjoyed um, because it's just a, a neat story. Very cool. Enjoy, boys. I Hopefully think you'll you like, like them. them. Yeah, I love that book. And that book's also a good book. And then you all share, and then you all read each other's too. I would probably just trade each other. I don't really read that one. <laughs> I've already read that one. All right. Okay. Quiet on the set, everybody. This is Grandma Reads, Scene 8, Take 137. A pirate poem. If sailor tales to sailor tunes, storm adventure, heat and cold. If schooners, islands, and maroons, and buccaneers in their fairy gold. And all the old romance retold exactly in the ancient way. Can please as they please the old the wiser youngsters of today, so be it, and fall on, if not, if studious youth no longer crave, his ancient appetites forgot, Kingston or Valentine the Brave, or Cooper of the Wood and Wave, so be it also, and may I and all my pirate share the grave where these in their creations live. Sounds like a sci-fi. <laughs> <laughs> What's the book? Treasure Island. Treasure Island, and I love piratey tales. And Uncle Zach and Ethan also recommended this book. I think I read that three or four times when I was like 14 and 15. But Ethan, can you tell us a little bit about Treasure Island? Um, it was one of my favorite books for a long time. I still love it. It's a book about pirates and the kid who gets stuck with pirates. And I always thought it was really cool. And there's also a really good Muppets movie. <laughs> awesome. Uncle Zach, you have anything to add to that? The Muppet version of it is incredibly good, um, but the book is very fun. It's a good adventure tale. All right. So, Cobalt, I hope you enjoy Pirate Tale. <laughs> Mom in the frame? Do you want to share a seat with Mom? All right. That's okay. We're going to do this scene and then we'll right. let Josh do the scene. Right inside. All right, Grandma reads, scene 10, take yellow. <gasps> All right, Andrew, you can unwrap your gift. This was recommended by Uncle Zach and Aunt Trevor, and truth be told, probably several other family the members. The Lord of the Rings. I don't yes. know if you'll like it. I read half of the first one, but... <laughs> so, I like the artwork on this. I mean, Tolkien yeah. is Pull not... Pull out the first one and see if it's got trying. recommended by... Oh, yeah, there. Tolkien's not a really popular author. Um, yeah, I've, I've never really heard of him. Relatively unknown. Yeah, he's relatively unknown. <laughs> not many people read him. There you go. Um, recommended by... Recommended by Aunt Treva and my dad. Yeah. <laughs> so do I have to give you a backstory on this one? Um, yes. Okay. I have no idea what this book is about. Orcs, hobbits. Orcs, hobbits. What's there's, a hobbit? There's this is a little ring that um, you have to keep it secret and keep it safe. That sounds like nonsense. <laughs> yeah. Just make another ring. And just follow your nose. That's all you should know. That's, really? a, that's all you need to know. Well, I'm looking forward to it. Yes, that's all, all right. I'm telling you. We want to hear when Andrew has read all three of those. You see how thick those books that are? That might take a while. Yeah. Very thick Especially books. Especially because I'm currently reading two other books. I'm getting right. Getting... All right. Enjoy. Oh, Thank you. <laughs> Trevor's not telling you anymore. Keeping it secret. Anymore. All right. Grandma reads scene nine, take. I gave up counting a while ago. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're here with Quay, who's going to unwrap his book. Recommended by Uncle Josh. I do have a text message where he mentioned this book from his own phone. So I believe he did recommend it. 
The boy is going to take his really sweet time in opening it. I'll get the hand signal. <laughs> Josh is All right, what is this, boy? Uh, Hatchet. Hatchet, have you ever read it? No. All right. Josh, can you tell us a little bit about this book? This is about a kid who decides that he is fed up <laughs> and decides to go and live in the woods. He does not want to hang out with his family no more. <laughs> so he, he takes off. And he lives in a tree. He lives in a but tree. But he takes a hatchet. Well, You're going to love it. Yeah. My recap says 13 year old Brian Robinson is on his way to visit his father when the single engine plane in which he is flying crashes. Oh, this is a completely different Suddenly, book. Brian finds himself in the familiar wilderness with nothing but a tattered windbreaker and the hatchet his mother gave him as a present and the dreadful secret has been tearing him apart since his parents' divorce. But now Brian has no time for anger, self-pity, or despair. It will take all his know-how and determination and more courage than he knew he possessed to survive. Does that sound familiar? This is a completely different thing. Is it? <laughs> but it is equally good. <laughs> all right, Quay, you read it and you let us know if Josh's you... story or mine was the right one. I don't know. Okay. And then you can watch the movie White Wolves, because that's <laughs> what that is based on. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Alright, everybody. <laughs> Quiet on the set. Right, Grandma reads, scene 11, take octopus. <laughs> Alright, we're here for Shariah's book. We're not going to unwrap it because she's not here right now. We're going to let her unwrap her own books. There are two sets of books here. One is Face on the Milk Carton, which Trisha and Trisha recommended, so I'm going to let her talk a little bit about that. And the other is Lion, Witch, in the Wardrobe, all the Narnia series that Aunt Trina recommended by C.S. Lewis. So, Trish, can you tell us a little bit about why you like Face on the Milk Carton? I have never loved to read, and it's one of the ones I remember the most from high school. We had to read lots of books and write reports and things, and that was one of my favorite ones, and it's, um, I probably should read it again, but... Um, it's about a missing child, and it's just an interesting story. And I've heard there's more than one. Like oh, I've oh, never read that, oh. so maybe we'll read that too. So this girl sees the face on the milk carton, and it's her face from years ago. Mm -hmm. It starts a whole mystery. Yeah, trying to figure out what she's, what's going on. Yeah, I see that where she is. Yeah, and then the other set, uh, the Chronicles of Narnia, all the Narnia books by C.S. Lewis. Aunt Trina recommended, and it's really cool because Andrew got the Tolkien books, Shariah has the C.S. Lewis books. When I was in Oxford, England, I went to this little cafe called the Eagle and Child, and C.S. Lewis and J.R.R. Tolkien used to meet there. In the corner and have tea and talk about their stories when they were writing these books. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was really cool when I was actually there at the Eagle and Child where those authors used to sit around and talk about their stories. So thanks for visiting all the classic books of your childhood. <laughs> Aunts and uncles and moms and dads, thanks for participating, putting you on the spot as a surprise. So Grandpa's going to compile all of these video clips, and if anybody else took video clips, they can send to Grandpa, and we will send you the movie out, but it'll be a different movie this year, because you guys never got to be in the movies before. Yeah. Yay! That's a wrap. <laughs> it's a wrap. We'll tell them what to say. Okay, everyone, on three, you got to say thank you, Grandma, really loud. Okay. Thank you, Grandma. Wait, I'm three. <laughs> One, two, three. Thank you, Grandma.